welcome back to my channel um it's been a while since i've talked to you guys a lot has happened um since then my mom calls me and she says hey did you see your message from your cousin leo or leo in english and i was like no i they did they didn't have their name on there their name was something weird on their facebook and i didn't know it was him so i said no she said that your dad is in the hospital in phoenix he had an accident um and he is not looking super good so what happened was my dad was drinking you guys don't know he is a hardcore alcoholic and he was drinking um one night <clears throat> he got in a fight with this man according to the girlfriend and the man threw him like picked him up and threw him on top of a car and then he fell off the car and um hit his head on the concrete so his girlfriend said that they called the ambulance because she thought he was dead and but he managed to awaken and get up and said no i'm not going to the hospital and that he wanted to go home that i think he went to work and he had a seizure and they took him to he works in yuma arizona well they took him to yuma arizona um hospital but they didn't have the equipment and care that he needed for his specific situation so they ended up taking him flying him over to phoenix so on december 25th on christmas day we packed our bags and we took off at about five o'clock in the morning and we took off to phoenix and it was me um luz my sister her husband and norma my sister and we took off because we had talked to the nurse the night before um to the nurse and doctor and they said yeah your dad is not gonna make it it was instead of sad i was pretty i was pretty positive he would get out of it for some reason i don't know if that's denial um and i was pretty a, a little bit upset because like how do you get yourself into this situation you know like you have everything in life you have a good job you're a hard worker you got a good healthy body you know like why do you continue to seek this addiction you know <clears throat> the substance abuse when you have so much to live for had stickers with wires on his head and they were to check his brain activity plus any seizures he had tubes he had a feeding tube he had a breathing tube um ivs he was on four different medications and things were just worse to worse to worse so he um he had a brain bleed his brain was bleeding and it was also bruised um he all of a sudden had blood clots one time now at one point they realized like his situation just got a little bit worse because not only did he have brain bleed bruised brain blood clots but they said his withdrawals were going to be really bad because of you know how much he drank how often for how many years and if you guys don't know withdrawals from alcohol and i have it pulled up here because i didn't really know until this had happened but um six hours after you stop drinking you get anxiety shaky hands headaches nausea vomiting insomnia and sweating which like i said he was starting to shake his whole body 12 hours to 48 hours after your last drink you might have problems with hallucination seizures within the first two days after you stop and you can feel hear things that aren't there 48 to 72 hours from drinking can cause confusion raising heart high blood pressure fever and heavy sweating <clears throat> he had non-stop fevers he was shaking all the time he um was super confused um he had bl high blood pressure which they had to give him which they had to give him medication for which caused him sodium to drop and um this caused them to have to put an iv for sodium and it wouldn't stay to his veins so they had to use the vein from his neck it was just like come on you know like we can't catch a break 
Then the day after that, me and Norma went. I drove for the first time on a highway and it was insane. Well, a freeway. It was like a seven lane freeway. Crazy. So then we went to the hospital and um, we just kind of visit with him. We can't really talk to him because they have to keep him. That day they were going to take the breathing tube out to see if he could breathe on his own. So they couldn't um, take him off the sedative. So we couldn't really talk to him, so we visited with him a little bit, but then we left um, kind of right away because there was really nothing left to do. That day they tell us that he actually opened his eyes and he was doing commands okay-ish. It wasn't the best and he just seemed really tired and they took the tube out and he could breathe on his own. So they were able to kind of do that advancement and then we left because you know he was getting better and so we decided to go down to mexico because our family was worried about us down there and we visited with them and then um we heard that he is talking and he's doing great so we went we decided to come home because we are moving down to arizona I just fell in love with that area we went to where my cousins live it's like suburbs and it's just like the dream you know like little neighborhoods where you can walk around and kids will come to your door for halloween that kind of stuff and we really like it and then the stores like <clears throat> it's all separate so like the houses are this way and the stores are this way and if you don't want to go to the store you don't go to the store if you want to go to the store it's only 10 minutes away but it's like farther out um so yeah anyway when we were coming back from mexico my dad talked to me on the phone and i could tell he was still a little confused because he was like oh they got me on 15 pills and i'm like well it's for your own good and he's like yeah it's for my own good and then he's like oh i just want to leave i'm like <clears throat> i'm like you're in the hospital there for your own good the nurses are so nice to you and he's like yeah the nurses are nice to me so i could tell he was still a little confused he honestly sounded like a child and he was very shaky and so um they said that, it, that it's gonna take about they're gonna keep him a couple more days in the ICU. they have we're gonna keep him a day in the icu and then they're gonna move him to a regular hospital room because he's good enough to go and um two weeks in inpatient rehab for his body so what we've decided is this is gonna sound brutal but sometimes you just have to take it he's 50 something 53 52 but he's like so young still i want him i want to see him you know the 60 year old man driving a truck you know with his cowboy boots on and his belt and he's a retired guy who you know comes and sees his grandchildren every day something like that i would love to see him like that and so we have a plan that because right now he doesn't have any money um and he doesn't have a car and he doesn't have a cell phone so we're thinking that when he gets out of the hospital that hopefully we'll be moved into the area we want to move to and he can come with us and little by little give him some freedoms but really try our best to tell him look this is how it is you stay here with us or you go on your own but we're not gonna help you and this is the last time like real tough you know and um and if he decides to stay you know i want to help him get into healthy things like you know charity um whether it be volunteering at a thrift store or something like that or getting into maybe going to a bingo night with other people his age or you know stuff that are healthy sober living kind of things and you know try our best while he's with us and if he decides not to be with us anymore then bye you can go but i told the girls we have to be tough i told my sister um if he decides to leave us we aren't giving him a single cent we aren't giving him anything of advantage if he's gonna leave he's gonna leave on his own how he came and i know that sounds so harsh but a lot of you guys know what i'm talking about and I just hope that he sees it and he wants to stay because I think this could be a good opportunity to spend some time together with him. We never had him. I mean, we had him till we were 10 and then until I was 10. And from then on, I never really saw him again, like constantly. And so this is a chance for him to know us. We'll be recording our journey moving to Arizona. 
we are gonna be moving like the brokest ever like so i'm gonna be documenting everything and soon enough i'll have to tell my boss once i know kind of like if it's two if it's a two week notice or month notice um because i don't know if i'm leaving at the end of january or if i'm leaving in two weeks so um but once i tell my boss i'm gonna tell the children and that's gonna rack me i already know anyway that's all i want to tell you guys so yeah follow my journey on the vlogging channel um follow my journey on the tiktok and i will see you guys in my next video bye <laughs>